All right, back again, knocking out chapter 10. And this is 10-3, using chords. Not like a musical chord, but a circular chord. And uh, our essential question, what are two ways to determine when a chord is a diameter? So we're going to talk about some things like that today. And recall what a chord is. It's a segment with endpoints on the circle. So what happens is you create some arcs. When you have a chord, you get a little minor arc created, and you get a major arc created. And of course, if your chord is a diameter, then you got two semicircles. All right. So first thing, talking about chords creating arcs. Now, ma mucho theorems here, and uh, pretty logical. Let me go through what each one is breaking down. A lot of words. Let me just try to make some sense of this stuff. So in 10-6, in the same circle or in congruent circles, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding chords are congruent. So if I have a chord and another chord, so A, B, the arc, if the arcs are congruent, then the chords are congruent, and vice versa. If the chords are congruent, the arcs are congruent. So that should be pretty simple. All right, these next two kind of go hand in hand. Look at the situation that you have right here. You've got um, a diameter of a circle. If it's perpendicular, so the diameter's cutting through. If it is perpendicular to a chord, so of course it doesn't have to be. You could have a diameter like this and a chord like that. You know, they don't have to be perpendicular. But when they are, you are going to bisect the chord. So if EG is a diameter, then you know that HD is the same as HF. And also the arcs, GD, is the same as GF. So that's a very powerful thing. Whenever you have a diameter being perpendicular to a chord. All right, and in 10-8, if one chord of the circle is perpendicular, bisect or another, then the first chord is a diameter. So now it's kind of just like the reverse, the converse of it. If you know that you have perpendicular bisector, so for in a, in a sense, if I go like this, and I tell you that it's perpendicular and it bisects, then you know that it has to pass through the center, a.k.a. be a diameter. So these two theorems kind of go hand in hand, all right? The concept of diameter and perpendicular bisector. All right, so let's see how we're going to use it. Example one, using congruent chords to find an arc measure. All right, check this out. In the diagram, circle P is congruent to circle Q. So I know everything about them is the same. So therefore, um, my radii are the same, everything. So then they're telling me that FG is congruent to JK. So this is given. Well, then if that's the case, we just talked about it. Congruent chords make congruent arcs. So if that is 80, then GF or FG will be 80. All right, simple, simple, simple. You don't really have to write all that down if you don't want to, but it's there for you from our textbook. All right, second example. All right, here we go with this perpendicular bisector diameter thing. Find HK and find the measure of arc HK. All right, so straight up HK is the chord length. And, oh, okay, let's see what happens here. Circle. And so I'm going through the center, so I know I've got a diameter being perpendicular to a chord. If that is the case, the theorem tells me that H to M is the same as K to M. Therefore, 7 on each side. Since they gave me 7, they had to give me this 7, so then I know I can put that 7 in. All right? So therefore h to k is just 7 plus 7, or 14. 
All right, now part B. Let's see what we got here. Yeah. Finding HK. Oh, okay, well, check it out. Cool. If I know that that the arcs are the same, well, I mean, I know that the chords are the same, perpendicular, bisector, then I know that the arcs are also the same. So therefore, I can just set 11x equal to 70 plus x. All right. And it all comes back to the theorems that we just discussed. So set them equal to each other. Solve it. X is 7. And they want to know the actual measure of HK. All right. So plug it back in once you get 7. And of course, then each of these little arcs would be 77 degrees. Add them together, and you're looking at 154. So there are a couple illustrations of what's happening with those theorems. Right. Do indeed try the monitor progress questions if you will. Pause the video. All right, so here we go. So monitor progress, one, two, three, and four. Uh, number one, pretty easy for sheezy, baby. If AB is 110, then BC is 110 if they're telling you that the, are, that the chords are the same. So AB is 9 and 9, so there you go. Now in the second one, it's a little trickier. They're telling you that AC, the arc is 150. So this goes back to the last section. So I know I got 150 from there to there. Then the remainder of the circle has to be 360 minus 150 which is 210, and the arcs are the same. So divide it by two, and you would get a 105 and a 105. And these questions are independent of each other. It might have been a little bit confusing when you first looked at one and two. But one is a separate question than two. Now at the bottom, uh, three and four. So CE, let's see, next I'm gonna find the indicated arc measure length. All right, so C to E, the chord, well, if there's five there, there's five there. Five and five is ten. And then the measure of the arc from C to E going around a circle. All right, well, set them equal to each other. Solve it for X, plug it back in, 72 and 72, 144. All right, moving along. Equidistant chords theorem. All right, now check this out. This should hopefully make sense. So if you got a circle, and, all right, so the center's there. Like, the further out you go from the center of the circle in any direction, if you stop and draw a chord perpendicular to it, all this theorem is saying is, like, if you go the same distance out, like, say I go, like, four units out, four units out, and I stop and I draw a chord perpendicular to wherever I ended up, well, then those chords have to be the same length, all right, and vice versa. So the further away you go from the center, the, you know, the, the lengths of the chords have to be the same. And the further out you go, obviously the chords are getting smaller, aren't they? Like if I went way out to the edge a certain distance and put a chord, they're getting smaller as the length of the distance away from the center gets larger. Right, let's see how we're going to apply that. All right, good question here. And these guys, believe it or not, appear on SATs a little bit as well. So you'll see they're going to get creative on the SAT with trying to get you into a situation where you have a right triangle. So you can use Pythagoras or 3690s or Sokotoa. Um, in this book, in this section, we're going to stick to Pythagoras. So I'll show you right here in example four last example for this section today. In the diagram, QR equals ST. All right, so the chords are the same, equals 16. So look what I have here. I got the perpendicular. So I know that that's getting cut in half. That's getting cut in half. Then they tell me it's 16. So I know that all these little pieces are eights all the way around. All right. 
and that wasn't a very good eight. All right, so then they tell me that CU is 2x, CV is 5x minus 9. Oh, okay, well, check it out. If QR is equal to ST, then that means that they are the same distance away from the center of this circle. So that means that 2x has to equal 5x minus 9. Because I want to ultimately find the radius of this thing. Oof, I don't even see a radius there. So watch how cool this is going to be. All right, so I can say 2x equals 5x minus 9 to solve for x. So subtract 5x is divide by negative 3. So x is 3. So then I can plug it back in, and I know that cu and cv have to equal 6 when I plug it back in. So I'm plugging it into there and to there, and you get 6. All right. Okay, so that's going to help. But then how am I going to find the radius? All right, so check this out. We made the circle a little bit bigger here. And as you can see, you can put a radius anywhere you want on a circle, and it is the same in the way. All radii are in the same circle, and then being equal. So therefore, I'm going to draw this wherever I want. And look how I can position it. I know what this length is. I just figured it out. It's 6. I know what this length is. I just figured it out up above. It was 8. So this is what I'm talking about on an SAT. They're going to get you into a fancy situation where all you're really doing, friends, is using the Pythagorean theorem, in this case, to find the radius. So I know there's a lot going on, but think about what we did. Let's backtrack it, because now it's easy. I used the concept of this being the same as this, because it's the same distance away from the circle. And how do we know that? because these chords are the same length in the given. QR is equal to ST. That is just like saying, all right, well then, those two lengths are the same. All right? Okay, next we've got the eights because we split the 16s in half. So now that got us into a situation where, oh, okay, where in the world am I gonna put my radius? Well, again, you could put it anywhere you want, guys. You could have put it there. You could have put it there. You could have put it there. Anywhere you want to make the right triangle. So now you just have r squared equals 6 squared plus 8 squared. But you're probably good enough to know that your Pythagorean triples are 6, 8, 10. And so the radius of this circle is 10. So maybe you want to rewind that. I said a lot right there. Monitor progress. Pause it and try it. So you can get the same type of concept, and we'll pick it back up. All right, so here we are with our last question today, uh, Monster Progress 5. So K, J, K, and L, M are 24, so cut them in half, 12 and 12. Set N, P equal to N, Q, and you get X is 3. Plug it back in, and you get 9 and 9 for the distance away from the circle. And that was this distance. And then construct your right triangle anywhere that you would want to do it. I went N to K. You could have gone N to M if you wanted to. You could have gone N to L, N to J. They would all be the same. Make your right triangle 9, 12, 15. It's a Pythagorean triple. If not, throw it into Pythagorean theorem. All right, friends? Peace.